the founders uh, did not believe that your rights come from government. They were motivated to provide a philosophical justification for defying the crown of England. They wrote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. When they said, um, we hold these truths to be self-evident, they were saying that what follows is based on an axiom. Something is said to be self-evident when any proof you could offer for it would be less obvious than the proposition itself. Um, and one would be irrational to not believe it. Uh, when you hear philosophers say something like axiomatic or um, properly basic or self-evident, this is what they mean. All proper reasoning is based on an axiom. All arguments are based on an axiom or sound arguments are or at least a premise that's highly tenable, that's very easy to defend. For example, most people prefer ice cream to um, a, a, a nail through the hand. That's that, not an axiom, but it, it's, it's easy to defend. It's, it's, it's a pretty safe assumption. An example of an axiom is that one equals one. Um, let's see, this is uh, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. It means that rights don't come from government. Where do they come from then? They come from God. They just went to great lengths to make it clear that our rights are natural, ingrained in us, and from God. <clears throat> now, it, it, <clears throat> that I'm reading this all out of the Declaration of Independence shouldn't lead anyone to suspect that our rights come from that document. Please. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, that's not the case. Nobody believes that. Um, the founders didn't believe it, and there's no good reason for you to believe it either. Okay, I've iterated that enough, I, I, I hope. <laughs> so they were saying that since we have these rights, it's self-evident that we have these rights. It follows that there are certain ways we ought to treat one another. And since uh, these rights are natural, um, they don't come from law or government, the, the government can only be established in the will of the people. That, it does, it, that's not the next premise, of course. You have to, you have to build between those two, but that's, that's what they reason to. Their conclusion, um, the, the, we're going to, basically, we're going to defy you and set up our own government, and um, our justification for this is that we have natural rights and you're violating them. Since their whole line of reasoning is predicated on the proposition that we are endowed by our creator, with unalienable rights, it it, um, it it needs to be the case that that proposition is in fact self-evident, or at least highly tenable. I don't think it is. I don't think it's self-evident that we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. I believe it's true, but I don't think it's self-evident. Now, I do think it's self-evident that w we have natural rights, and, and this can be shown um, a, a couple of other ways. 
but I don't think it's self-evident that God has endowed us with natural rights. I happen to believe uh, that God exists, and I even tend to believe that the existence of God is self-evident. But, uh, sorry, the proposition we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights is not axiomatic. There's another principle, though, on which uh, you can ground natural rights. Uh, it's the principle of self-ownership. It's that you own your body. Or, your body belongs to you. Now, from that it follows that you, you're capable of owning something. So you could then, uh, in principle, be capable of owning something else. And now, um, I'm sorry, I need to ground that, don't I? It, it, if, if your body is owned by anyone, uh, it has to be you. You're always in possession of your body. You, you can't, as far as I know, dispossess yourself of your body. Now, it, it doesn't follow necessarily from that that there is any particular way that anyone else ought to treat you. It does, however, follow from that that there are ways in which others ought not treat you. Given that they don't own your body and you do, there are things that they have no right, no place in um, doing to you. And one obvious one is uh, initiating force. That's not their body. That's your body. And that person doesn't have a right, doesn't matter who that person is, to initiate force against your body. Because it's yours. A and that goes for space, too. You, it, there is... We each require a, a, a certain amount of space between uh, ourselves and everyone else in order to be comfortable, to feel like we're not being attacked. Um, now, if I own my body, it, it, it also follows that I own whatever I produce with my body. So, and now, it, it, whatever I produce with my body, if I if I have violated someone else's um, right in, in order to produce it, well, then I've already broken the the law. I can't um, say that I I own what I stole. I can't say, well, I used my body to get that, therefore I own it, because I I I put myself outside the law when I violated the other person's right. So, whatever we legally produce um, with our own body is our property. I had to stop and think about that some more. Um, the, the, the principle of self-ownership, I, I think, is, is not, after all, axiomatic. Because it entails the concept of ownership which is not axiomatic it's um intuitively perceivable we we all seem to understand it but i think it it needs building to it's not self evident that anything can be owned so we don't have an axiom but that's okay, because given the concept of ownership, which we do understand, and we will use 
once we start making laws, um, the the principle of self ownership is sufficient as a premise on which to base the reasoning underlying law. So, and the reason I need to do this, it, it, in case I haven't made it clear yet, is not because I uh, have a problem with the uh, the premise as it's found in the in the Declaration of Independence, uh, the one that says we that we are endowed by our Creator with unalienable rights, and that that's self-evident. That's fine with me. But I understand that there are you atheists who do not believe in God, and so th that um, is not fine for you. If the whole thing's based on the existence of God and you can't believe in God, well then you're kind of stuck without uh, a rational basis for law, and we can't have that. So we have to have something that we can all agree on, and the the religious people uh, don't have any problem. There, I, I can't imagine a, a religious person who should have a problem with the uh, uh, principle of self ownership as I have articulated it. So we 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 have a good happy uh, a premise. I wish I could say axiom, but we I I don't think we have that uh, on which to base uh, uh, the reasoning underlying the law.